Hi everyone. Happy Monday. I hope you're you're surviving the uh, the long push now to the holiday break. Um, so glad that you're all joining us. And Troy and Coramore, thanks for hosting tonight and uh, coming up with this idea to have a, just a pretty informal conversation and just talk about, you know, we've all lived through some of us two, three, or maybe as many as almost four months now of online teaching and hybrid and everything else. So we're just happy to be here and, uh, and sharing some ideas. My name is Jeffrey Benson. I'm um, the president of the California Choral Directors Association, and uh, I teach at San Jose State University in San Jose, California. And uh, again, Cora Moore, thanks for hosting this. We've Everybody today is welcome to kind of contribute and talk. Um, Troy and I asked some colleagues from around the country to pop in so that we knew we'd at least have some, some people joining us today with some good ideas and maybe some things that were clunkers <laughs> that maybe didn't work and how we're gonna pivot from there. Um, I think we've got some high school folks and some middle school folks and some collegiate folks and some community chorus folks. So thank you all for joining. Um, and I'm gonna just kind of start with, you know, maybe the, the question like, Let's start with some something really positive. What has gone really well in the last week or two for you? What has been like, what have you gotten excited about? And can I throw it to like, not to put anybody on the spot, but like Susie, I know you well, and I know I know something's gone well this week. I'm sure like three things have gone not so great, but what what rocks this week, Susie? Okay, the, something really great happened today. Well, I mean, it's been in the works like for a couple of weeks, but somehow, okay, over the last couple of weeks, I've been trying to, figure out a way for sight reading to sort of make a little bit more sense in this format, right? Because it's not practical for kids to be unmuting themselves and trying to do it in front of the class. Like they are, not, my, my middle school kids are not about to, turn, like maybe one or two kids, but most of them are not about to be like, I'll sight read in front of the whole, like, and I'm, I'm not trying to make them do that if they don't want to do it. So I've been doing a Miss Martone makes a mistake right, where I put a little sight reading example up and then I make a mistake on purpose. They're allowed to say ideas out loud, but they also can type in the chat, right? So that way they're, if they make a mistake, they're, they're not, they don't feel weird. They're just typing it to me. So, you know, of course, cause I'm corny as anything, I started making a little jingle and I would be like, Miss Marta makes a mistake. Like I'd be like, it's time for your favorite game show kids. And you know, and so, <laughs> I have this girl who's an eighth grader and she's like, I, I'm, I really like to do animation. Like, can I make an animated intro to the game show? And I was like, yes. So on Friday, <laughs> I downloaded some little like a fake applause thing. And I downloaded like a little sad trombone. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> and I just made a little like 14 second. It's time for your favorite game show. Miss Martel makes a mistake. And then I sent her like a, a handful of bitmojis and she made a little animation of it. So now I have an intro to my game show. And like the kids are like, is it time for the game show yet? So now they're like asking to do error detection in uh, sight reading examples. So yeah. <laughs> I love this. Um, maybe we can pay you to uh, to make our all of our introductions as we- I can, I mean, if somebody <laughs> wants, I can share it with you. It's 14 seconds if you guys want to see it, but. I can also just tell you about it. I think you should definitely play it. We all need a good laugh. If, if Yeah, well, I can pull it up. Yeah, while Susie pulls it up, um, Linnell, what's, what's gone well for you in the last week or two? And then we'll come back to Susie. Well, mine is similar to Susie's, but I did it on a flip grid. It was to the point that the kids did not want to do anything at all, um, as in sight of what, as in rhythm. Every, lately we've been having every nine weeks, we're swapping out a, a different group. So I don't have the kids for the whole 18 weeks or 20 weeks or whatever. So I, I just got a new set of, of my nine week kids and they were so apprehensive about rhythm. And so what I did, I did, I used Flipgrid as the assignment to make them um, start clapping and gave them a different assign, different examples of um, rhythm. And then from there, they recorded themselves. They picked two or three of the, those rhythms and they recorded themselves doing that. And then um, people were actually able to rate them. And so it was like kind of cool. Now they were, now they're at to the point they're, they're, they're ready to just like, okay, do it. Can I sing now? Can I sing? And I'm like, oh, thank God they want to sing because just getting them to break down and just do just that. 
um, part has been really beneficial to them because at first it was just like, hey, does anybody want to clap this rhythm? It's like, no. But as long as they were able to clap it on Flipgrid and do it just that part and just be by themselves and alone and not by their families, they were all good. So that was my, yay, they can, they can clap rhythm. And it's actually pretty good. <laughs> That's awesome. And, and what, is that something that you had been doing all along and then they got excited about just recently or? I learned last year that I didn't knew nothing about anything, about nothing, about nothing and anything. And so I kind of like just tripped around and found some different things of how other people are doing it. And at first it was just like, I wanted them to try and clap it out. And they were just like not trying to even show their face on screen. And so this was the way to, for them to actually do it and to actually put their own emojis and things like that on there. And it, it just they were just really creative and just had a good time. Um, so they enjoy, they, they now enjoyed it. Like, are, are we going to have another assignment with that? And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, Hey, here's another one. Here's some 16 notes. You got this, you know, so they're having a good time with it. That's fabulous. before. Yeah. Susie, did you want me to share? It looks like you just sent it. I can share it. Okay, or sure. Or yeah, I haven't queued up, but. Go, oh, go for it. I, you sent it to me, so I wasn't sure. Okay, I didn't want, I didn't want to like, you know, overstep my bounds. So, all right. Here it is. Can you guys see it? All right. Hey kids, it's that time again for your favorite game show. Miss Martone makes a mistake. <laughs> That's all. <holding. laughs> that is fantastic. I love that. <laughs> it's the little things in life, right? Amy Katsanis, how are you today? Amy's joining us from Iowa. Um, I'm good. Um, I just I'm in between rehearsals. I've had two. I have one more in at well seven my time. Um, I so I'm in a interest. I'm in Iowa, so we're on the news. We're winning, um, and so we have been face to face all semester. <laughs> um, but in our numbers, the kids have actually done really well. But I've had kids quarantining all semester, um, and I'm seeing of my choirs, 15 kids at a time, 12 feet apart, masked, um, 30 minutes, and then we let the air clear. And so we have um, on Friday we we kind of illegally went into the parking garage <laughs> and I was able to have um, my whole group there. And for my freshmen, the first time we did that, they walked in and they're like, who are all these people? Because they've never seen the entire choir before. Um, and we did a sharing with our other mixed group. And it was just really nice to feel like we were, <laughs> we've been doing something. And we're, we normally would have had like two concerts and we literally have worked on two pieces for the entire semester. Um, and that's just where we are. But it was just really nice to share with the other group. Um, and then my community chorus has been on Zoom all semester. And I made the realization last week that we can do solfege with everybody unmuted as long as we go slowly enough. And it was amazing <laughs> to be able to, for them to hear each other. And, and of course, with that, you wanna be listening anyway. Um, but most of my rehearsal is them muted when they're singing. So it was just really nice to be able to do some of that stuff together and, and for them to just hear another singer. But we're, we're surviving over here. I love that. I, you know, I'll, I'll just pop in as, and maybe Molly Peters, would you be willing to share next? I'll just pop in and sort of share a little something that I kind of just decided to do. And I didn't know if it was gonna work this semester um, with my beginning. So we have a beginning tenor bass ensemble or a non-audition tenor bass ensemble called our Glee Club. And normally in non-COVID times, we teach that group of tenors and basses a tag, you know, and we every class period maybe, or every couple of class periods, we teach another short little barbershop tag. And I thought in talking with my grad students, I thought, well, we should still do that, even if it's everybody on mute and we'll use the Barbershop Society's website for them to hear real live singers in their ears. And we thought, well, this is a great way also to teach some of my grad students how to do virtual choirs as well. They're like 
10 seconds or 20 seconds long. So we just started doing that early on. And I'll have to, I have to say that I'm really grateful with the beginning singers that we did this because I could throw together a, a virtual choir thanks to Cora Moore and Troy teaching us how to do that um, in just a couple of hours. And the guys have been so excited to be able to hear themselves like regularly, like once a week or once every two weeks when we record another 10, 15 second thing they're actually hearing what they sound like as an ensemble. And so I'm deaf. That's something that I didn't, I didn't know what the heck I was doing. And I just thought, well, we'll just try it and see what happens. And, and like once every week or once every two weeks that they get to hear themselves again is more motivation for them to Troy. And I've talked about this motivating singers to keep submitting those audio recordings or those video recordings is hard. But if we, they've got these little sort of carrots along the way of, Oh, well, we just sounded really good. So, okay, fine. I'll record this two and a half minute song has been a nice little bonus that I wasn't expecting. So Molly Peters, how are you today? Um, not bad. I'm like counting down the days till Thanksgiving. We, we get a full week. This is only the second year, you know, for the first 16 years or whatever in my district, we teach Monday, Tuesday, and then a half day Wednesday. So I have never been more grateful for um, a full week off, but um, actually the, I had a couple of things. So, I, th I found that too, you know, something that's been successful for the virtual choirs is doing little parts of a song and then exactly like playing it for them. Um, especially like my, cause I teach at a junior high and a high school um, that really motivates the junior high kids. If I'm like, oh, let me play for you the verse of, you know, whatever song we recorded working on seasons of love now, um, you know, and they're like, oh, wow, we sound really good. So I think that's a really good thing too. A, it makes editing easier for me and it's more, doable for me to say like i want you to sing measures seven through 24 you know instead of like record the whole song um and then uh i totally agree the sight reading thing that you guys are talking about um you know i mean i struggled with with solfege stuff because it, it it just like the way that i would do it in class you know where you put up a passage and you read it you know it, it was not working i i am i do have a subscription to sight reading factory so once a week, my kids, you know, are, are expected to log in and I just check the practice log. I don't, and they just get participation points. I, I'm not, I've never done like assessments on Solfege. And so um, it just incorporated into the way we learn our repertoire. So it just felt like kind of mean to all of a sudden be like, and now I'm going to test you on it. So I, um, I switched and, and um, I did, I, I like Susie's idea. I'm going to steal that too. But um, I made like a slideshow. I can put a copy of it in the chat, but like where um, the kids have to figure out what song it is. So I have like, you know, like Mary Had a Little Lamb and then um, I'm in the process because there's like 10 songs in there. I think I've done two. And then so like one slide will be um, the hand signs, right? Like actually, I don't know if I can, if I can, sh can I share my screen? No, I can't. Um, like the 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 Kerwin hand signs and then the next slide has that same piece in oh wait oh I think I can um has that in the yeah right so this is like the solfege only and I just got these from the what they like call the everything slides right so this is this is um a little cumbersome oh yeah and then I have like detective Pikachu here <laughs> and then here it is like you know in in music and then the next one um is Ode to Joy and they all have like little, so I need to go in and make the hands, you know, the hand sign, the Kerwin signs for these slides. Um, so that, that's that been fun. And then that's the only time I've ever had them unmute when they were like, oh, that first one, it's Mary Had a Little Lamb. And I was like, great, everybody sing. And then I unmuted and that was funny. They laughed a lot. Um, and then my very last thing that uh, I also teach a guitar class. I don't know if anybody here teaches guitar, um, but I I have done a complete overhaul on my guitar because I used to never teach tab, but it's this. I mean, it's like I just in talking to one of my kids, like in a one on one meet, you know, when he was like, oh, I use this whatever website. And I was like, you know what? The important thing is that you're just playing and like wanting to learn more. And the last thing I want to do is have kids be like, that was horrible and like turn them off of guitar forever. <laughs> so I did a switch. I switched over to them reading tabs and it's as much as I hate losing that musicianship part, it's just so cool to have them be like, oh, okay, I see, you know, and then like they're playing canon and D in like five minutes. You know, it's just, it's just the same thing, giving them like little tidbits to hang on to. So those are, those are the things that, that have been working for me 
Um, so yeah, I can put a link to that. I can do a force copy link if anybody wants that slideshow. You got to do a little work on those, getting those hand signs in there, but um, I'm happy to put that in there. Awesome. Thanks, Molly. Um, uh, I just met Kendra Fisher from Granbury High School in Texas. Kendra, thanks for being here. And Troy, thanks for introducing us. Kendra, what's what's been working well for you? Uh, well, so we've had a lot of things that have been working well for us, but um, we're in a little bit of a different situation than some of um, than a lot of people because we have face to face kids, but we also have virtual students who are synchronous and we have virtual students who are asynchronous. So we have um, quite the range of things that we have to keep up with. Um, well, uh, I would I'm really happy that this week, actually tomorrow, um, I'm sending out a, a music video that we created and the kids have had a lot of fun making it. So we um, we sang several repertoire pieces, but I also worked on one for the virtual kids to be involved with as well. Um, I didn't give them every song that the face-to-face -face kids did because that's just kind of impossible, you know, time restraints, but um, it's really exciting. I, I had the virtual kids submit their recordings via Flipgrid, uh, you know, of them singing. And then I was just able to download those, all of those videos. And so I have all of the virtual students in a picture in picture with the with the other choir students. So they're right there with their choir and you see their mouth, you know, singing and you hear, you know, put their audio with everybody else's audio. And so then we have this music video that we can also send over to our middle school kids and they can see the high school choir because we don't get to go to the middle school this year and they don't get to come to us. And um, so Flipgrid has been really kind of our best friend this year as far as our virtual kids and um, Zoom. We've had our kids log in, if they're synchronous, log in via Zoom to class. But, um, you know, of course the downside is that they're on mute, but they are practicing and they are um, doing everything that we're doing. I share the site reading on the screen and most of the synchronous kids are like upper level kids. So it's okay for them. The asynchronous kids are like your beginner kids. And so that's a completely different ball game, but at least it helps the um, upper level varsity kids still be engaged, even if they are at home and they still get to sing. And now we have a product that we can put out that is kind of, you know, I mean, it is a performance. It's not what they want necessarily, but it's cool. And we've learned a lot of new skills in the process. That's fantastic, thank you. And I, a new person to me as well is um, Sarah Gleason. Amy sort of electronically introduced us, but Sarah, remind me, you're coming to us from Connecticut, is that right? Yes, I live in New York, but drive across the border and teach in Connecticut, but oh, I'm fun. a Texas girl. I grew up in Dallas and went to TCU and taught in Colleen for the first beginning of my career. So, so now we're up here. Um, yes, I teach in New Canaan, Connecticut, and we've been uh, since the beginning of the year in hybrid, half the students at home and half with us. And um, we, a month ago, were able to go back to 100% because we were doing really well. And then today went back to hybrid. Um, so it's uh, the the little tagline in our district has from our superintendent has been making, you know, all your planning so you can seamlessly move between fully remote hybrid and fully in person. We're like, sure, of course, no problem. So um, that's been the trick for me is really being able to seamlessly move. Our students also have the choice, our families have the choice to pull out and go hybrid or go remote at any point. So they can go remote for a week if they think that's best for their family, they can pop back in. So even if you think um, you have, you know what you're going to have, you don't usually. And so at the beginning of the year, that was really difficult for me to plan. My brain was overloaded. And so I took an approach of focusing, and I also have an all-come choir. So all four, like ninth through 12th grade, three-year-old staters with never sung before. And um, so I decided to take a small group um, approach and make sure I've always done mentorships, like the seniors and juniors who are ready will mentor a freshman that comes into the choir and they group up and they love it. And I decided to do that in pairs and then pair 
pairs together to have rehearsal partners from the very beginning of the year. And we took a lot of time for them to get to know each other. People, they created This Is Me slides. Um, we do a summer music share every year where they have to share something they did musically over the summer. They can just tell a story about, oh, I you know, went here and they played this kind of music, but these students year after year have started to bring it and they'll perform, oh, I play the piano, I do. And a lot of students shared things from home and that kind of helped us to bond. I guess all that to say, what's working for me right now is partially because at the beginning of the year, I decided to take off my, we will do the music hat and really make sure that I was taking care of them emotionally and socially, which involved music, but really make sure that they were connecting to each other because if someone's at home by themselves and they didn't have anyone to connect to, I wanted to make sure in this class, if no other class, you have someone who has your cell phone number, I have high schoolers, who has your number and is checking in on you. And if you can't get on the Zoom that will FaceTime you in and put you on Miss Gleason's desk and we made sure to connect together. So through that, my students have really enjoyed small group things. Um, and so my favorite moment this week was when, you know, I had the master plan because this was going to work for what I thought it was going to work for. And they flipped it on its head and I loved it. I've been focusing on a lot of warmups with my students because something I realized last spring is they did not know how to warm themselves up at home and practice well and truly take care of their voice. And I was putting them at home, I'm like, you know, warm yourself up and you know, record 15 seconds or something. And even though we'd been doing warm ups together all year, I had led, I had not put them in charge of their own warm ups. So that has totally changed. And my president, my vice president, and my section leaders lead warm ups every day. They can choose to lead one thing, take the whole warm up. I'm trying to take myself as a facilitator role and allow them to get used to being in front of the choir. A little bit more. And so we have been doing warm ups with a specific idea of everyone sharing what they do. You know, if someone has a voice teacher, share something you do, something you did in a theater show, something sharing things and picking favorites and always saying, uh, let's do a breathing one. Do you have a favorite breathing one? And really creating our toolbox together as a group. And so within our small groups this week, um, the kids that I had in person, I let them spread out all over the auditorium. I lost my classroom, so I don't have a choir room, but I have the auditorium for our class. Um, we spread out all over the auditorium. And I said, in your group, I want you to pick a warm up that your group needs right now. And you want to do, do it together. Then you're going to tell us. And then all the kids online, I put one of my seniors in charge. I was like, you're in charge. Come up with the online warm up. And what I found, I was thinking vocal warm up. Each group did something that they needed that day. The bases were exhausted and they had us doing jumping jacks. No problem. My sopranos, um, some of my soprano groupings um, had a few girls. They said, well, a few of our girls are trying to rest their voices. So we decided to do breathing exercises and we do one with fricative consonants. It's our ripatica. And so we did ripatica because they wanted to save their voice. And as we went around, I went, oh my goodness, this just told me so much more about what every single one of my students needed in this moment. And we did breathing. One group had us laying on the floor and closing our eyes and breathing. And it just, they decided what they needed. And we were fully warmed up by the time we went through six, we had six groups. We were fully warmed up, but it came from a place of what they needed on that day in so many more ways than just a vocal warm up. So that was just a moment for me this week where I had, you know, my brilliant plan um, that really focused in on what they needed overall, not just as a singer. Um, and that, that made me really happy and we're gonna keep that. We're gonna keep that when we can. So that was just a highlight from my week. I love that. I'm curious how many of you are finding that some of the like one of the good things that for me that's coming out of this is just I am maybe letting go of some controlling tendencies that I have had and it's because you just sort of have to and as as uh, Sarah just sort of pointed out like the students really rise to the occasion a lot of not all the time let's be honest um, but a lot of the time and I'm finding like the student leadership has like just increased tremendously and I, I'm starting to get comfortable with a lack of control a little bit, <laughs> maybe. Um, that's fabulous, thank you. Um, I was just gonna say one more thing just because it made me laugh to piggyback off Susie, which I love the thing your students made, is at the beginning of the year, we talked about when you have to be home, it's kind of awkward to record at home. They were like, can we just talk about how awkward it was in the spring? So two of my senior girls um, said, Miss Gleason, 
we would like to talk about how awkward it was to sing at home, but we'd like to make a video. And they made this five minute video of them and all the places you should and should not sing at home and how awkward it is and all the things that can destroy. It is hilarious. And I just said, can you just, you know, make them feel better about, don't worry, the seniors too feel awkward singing at home for the freshmen. And it was the best thing ever. And I told them I'm keeping it forever. Um, so the student leadership and having that, they will think of things that you never would have. That's awesome. Hi, Christy Rohayam. How are you? You're hovering above um, San Francisco. Hi, everyone. I know I'm actually in the Central Valley, but from the Bay Area, always from the Bay Area. Um, I'm doing well. Um, just you, you like brought something to my attention or just reminded me of something. I know a lot of students that this is difficult for them. We're still completely remote, um, but there are actually a lot of students that this has been like a time for them to shine. Um, so I think, you know, using student leaders and allowing them to kind of do their thing is a really great way to highlight those students who are now feeling more comfortable in this setting. Um, one assignment that we've recently done that's been pretty fun is a karaoke assignment. Um, and we've actually worked our way up to that. The first assignment was them just speaking their name, like recording their name. Hi, my name is Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, <clears throat> and I'm a freshman, whatever. <laughs> that was actually one of my assignments. Anyways. Um, and then the second one, second assignment was a sing-along. So they picked a song of their choosing and then they played it out loud. They sung along with it. Um, and then finally we've reached our karaoke assignment where it, it's another song of their choosing that like they okay by me. Um, and it can be singing, it can be rapping, it can be a different language, um, anything that kind of gets them excited. Um, and I've definitely received more of those karaoke assignments than I did of the, hi, my name is Ruth Bader Ginsburg at the beginning of the year. Um, so definitely getting more engagement as time goes on. Um, sight reading has been a really great thing. Our district got sight reading factory for every student every choir student and I think band students now as well in the district. Um, and they really enjoyed doing that on their own. And it's a quick way for um, us to check in on them because I mean, when we're doing this stuff in the classroom, like we're saying, it's completely different. And I think sometimes we, you know, if Jose is struggling and Katie is not like we put them together, but at the end of the day, one of them is still struggling. Um, and so this is really highlighting students who maybe need a little bit more help or um, it's just helping gauge their, their levels a lot more. So that's been really helpful. Um, and I try to debrief everything as much as I can because some students just will not turn in singing assignments at all, but if it's something written, um, they'll do it. And it's a good way for you to check in on them regardless. So yeah, those have been going really well. Awesome, thanks, Christy. I'm curious, how many of you, um, Cora Moore, when was it, Troy? Probably in May or, well, sometime in the summer, maybe June or July, um, hosted Scott Hanna-Weir to um, talk about his iterative approach to sort of the virtual choir process. And I'm curious how many of you are doing something either like that, or if you don't know what I'm talking about, just this idea of you know, them sort of doing a first draft of something where they do peer reviews, and then maybe a second draft that we grade or listen through and give feedback on and then finally maybe like a third step would be the final draft that might get put into some virtual choir are some of you doing something like that or similar how, how has that gone i'm just in this i'm happy to open the floor to anybody hi amy moyer i haven't seen you in so long um it, how has that gone have you had to make Troy and I were talking about this yesterday, actually, on the phone, like making some adjustments to that, because it's a, I think it is a great process at first, but maybe is not sustainable for every choir, for every kid the whole semester long. So I'm just, anybody want to chime in here on that conversation for a minute? Um, oh, I was, I'm sorry, Jenny. No, go ahead, Molly, you're good. I was just going to say, like, really limiting the number of projects so that they're not overwhelmed. It's, for me, it's one at a time. And it takes me probably from start to finish with like introducing it and learning it to we're going to watch the video in class is like at least four weeks, probably like five, six weeks. And I am totally fine with that. So like we were saying, letting go like, OK, we made two virtual choirs this semester, two. And then we're part of a district thing, like district wide choir thing. Fine. I'm totally happy with that. Jenny, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, so just as a, hi everybody, I'm Jenny Bent. I uh, teach at Sonoma State University. Uh, Jeffrey, I've, I've said this to you before, but I think that if anybody deserves a Nobel Prize for choral music, it's you, Troy, <laughs> for creating this entire choral more platform. It has literally saved my butt and probably <laughs> every other choral director I know. Uh, that that uh, seminar that um, that Scott gave was was wonderful, and I've uh, I've used it this semester. Um, I think the one thing that I've had to let go of um, and become more comfortable with this semester has been the quantity versus the quality and just getting used to the fact that, you know, we're not going to be, you know, learning as much as much repertoire, but in order to produce a and then product that is um, of a high standard, it does take uh, a number of takes and not just for, you know, the students. I mean, they they need time to um, learn the music, obviously, but to get used to the, you know, I have students who are struggling with, okay, I have a computer, where am I going to put my computer while I'm watching my score and trying to figure out just logistically what works. It, it takes a few takes to see, um, you know, how that works for them. But then also for us, you know, I just found out two weeks ago, I mean, I've been, I've been putting in um, between each uh, between each take that the students do, um, I've been entering them into Adobe Premiere because that's what I have. Um, but I realized that, you know, once I get to 10 tracks on my tiny laptop, the sound starts to cut out. And so that's something that I never would have anticipated happening. So then I need to, I need time to figure out how to make that work as well. So I think this semester, you know, we're doing the, the less is more approach, spacing out each of those, each of those um, submissions. And then next semester, when, you know, I feel a little bit more comfortable with it and my students feel really more importantly my students feel more comfortable um, you know with what needs to be done we'll probably be able to add you know some additional repertoire next semester and some more challenging repertoire as well also figuring out you know what what type of tracks do the students need you know do they need a click with a guide with a conductor you know I mean and it's different it's different depending on the piece uh, and so that's been a learning curve for, for me as well um, but yeah, I'm totally taking that approach. I've been really, really happy with it. Um, if you haven't watched Scott's uh, seminar, I highly, highly recommend it. It's been, it was a real, real lifesaver for me. Awesome. Thanks, Jenny. Hi, Kendra. Go for it. Um, I just wanted to talk about what you asked about the peer review process. Um, I did that this semester with uh, my my top level choir, because that was really something that I felt like would go better with um, older students uh, or students who are obviously uh, more, uh, less inhibited is what I guess is a better term. Because if it's a peer review thing, this is going to be, you know, students evaluating students and you don't always have like your uh, younger kids or some of your uh, like junior varsity kids, not always, hey, I want somebody to listen to me, right? So um, I used that process and the kids actually enjoyed it. So I had them all submit a video because we were currently working on a virtual choir project with Troy and his groups. And so that was a really fun experience for the kids. And I said, okay, y'all are gonna review each other because this is your first video that you've done for a project like this. So I had everybody submit a video via Flipgrid. And then I made those videos um, where they could each see them. And I, I just had the students evaluate each person in their own voice part section. So it wasn't, you know, overwhelming so you know tenors just evaluated tenors and then you get to see and I well I gave them a rubric to follow because they've never done something like this either and I needed them to know what they needed to think about and the things that they needed to be looking for and all of that kind of stuff and so I had them do that part at home but I had them the next day in class in their sections with their peers and discuss, you know, how, you know, why I said this about your video, or this is what I felt like, or this is what I saw. And so you really saw the older kids leading out in that particular setting. And the kids who are newer to that group, so say um, some sophomores or some juniors who hadn't been in there before, you know, really taking this um, very seriously. And then after we did that, I said, okay, now you've got your feedback from your peers, here's my feedback for you. 
okay, at the end of this week, we're going to do another one of these. And then we're going to, you know, evaluate again and see if we have made the necessary changes to our performance to make it, you know, where we need to be. But it gets them speaking uh, intellectually about music and using correct terminology and knowing what they're looking for and then learning about the whole process because at the time it was a virtual choir process so learning about the process and looking at other people's things and going how can I make my own better or how can I make my section better and so it's a good collaborative experience. Awesome thanks Kendra. Mm -hmm. um, Jeffrey can I ask a question really fast I'm sorry I don't mean to jump over you but i'm just curious um for those of you who are online how many times a week do you see your students like maybe just like throw type it in the chat and then for how long because i think it's really interesting even just talking with you know people in different districts like how differently and i think that's also you know kind of informing how much i try to not get the thing of like, well, everybody's doing all this stuff, but you know, like, and I, I am usually really good at it, but sometimes I get a little bit like, should I be doing more? But I don't know. I'm just, I was just curious. Yeah. And maybe additionally, it, while you're typing that in the chat, maybe also um, if you're going into this hybrid format soon, I know a lot of school districts have been fully virtual and then starting sometime now-ish, which sort of seems crazy as all the numbers are going up, that school districts are still talking about moving into hybrid um, or sometime in January. But I'm curious who has done that move um, into, into sort of some kind of in-person or some kind of hybrid. Linnell, I would love to pick your brain for a second because I um, Linnell conducts a community children's chorus. Um, and just for those of us who, in addition to our school jobs, also conduct some kind of community-based group, um, Troy and I have talked about sort of the adults who, some of whom want to participate and some of whom don't, but just from a community perspective, I noticed somebody posted, I think Molly posted that grades are not necessarily tied in the school to, you know, if they don't turn in that project, but like with my college kids, their grades are tied to that because they're all music, like the, especially my top ensemble, they're all music majors. Like I, I can do that, but I'm not sure I would do that at a middle school or high school level, but with a community children's chorus, for instance, you know, what are you doing to kind of motivate them to, are, are you doing some virtual choir submissions and how, how has the return rate been on that and what's been motivating for them, Linnell? We have had a, quite a few of um, actually gig events, which has happened, which was different for us. We're still getting gig requests. So that kind of helped motivate the singers to not only prepare for our concert, which we only, we're only, we usually we have maybe four or five pieces on a concert. We're only having one this time as I know other people are doing the same thing, but what's helping is that they're also staying busy with our other gig performances that we're preparing for. And so those singers, and, and may, it may not even be the whole group, it may just be an ensemble of those singers that are doing those other things, but it's also keeping people like, oh, well, we have this other gig going on. So we like did the A's game and we have to do the national anthem for something else. So they're preparing for those things. So that's been very helpful to keep the kids um, alive and well and like, okay, I have a reason to come to rehearsal. Um, the submissions, have been scary <laughs> because they are they're figuring that they're not hearing the other person. So that's the part that's really been like scary to them. They're like, I don't know if I'm in the right key or whatever. And so those are kind of things that's that's been like the 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 part that sucks. And um, I've been hearing those recordings, and they're like, I'm so sorry, Miss Linnell, I didn't know, I didn't. He's like, Yeah, okay. So that is the the tearing fire, the tear, the very the difficult part. Um, but for the community choir, for us just having those extra gigs and being able to, okay, send it to me so I can hear it first before we actually put it together for our virtual choir. Um, I wish, and I we don't have time now, I wish I would have did with um, what Kendra did is just to have like peer review and then have my comment. Cause basically right now they're just hearing my comment about different things that they're doing their small little parts of the, the, um, the big virtual choir. And it'll be nice to actually add, have the kids to actually do the peer review as well. So I, I think I'm gonna take that for next semester because I think we're gonna be in for the long haul since Oakland's numbers are going up higher than before. Um, but yeah, so that's the way that I, I think I went around the, around the question. But yeah, we're keeping up with different events. We've already had three different um, gigs requests. 
So I broke them out into different groups. And as for our virtual choir, they're just doing little sections at a time and, and pulling back. Um, the songs aren't as difficult as usual. I would, I would have really given them in the first place. I've pulled them back, pulled back to the point that they're like, they're like, they're feeling successful and I'm feeling successful and it will come together. But yeah, it's, it's been like just making sure that the things that you really want them to know, that's what we're really working on. It's not really the quantity, but really the quality and being very specific on what I'm trying to get across. So did that make sense? I think I was rambling. Okay. No, oh. not, that made <laughs> absolute sense. Thank you. Yeah. Dave, yeah. Oh, Dave, you're muted. Okay, there we go. I, uh, as many did, jumped into Zoom and virtual ensemble for the first time in the fall, and lots of things gone well, and I've learned a lot of things that I will do differently in the spring. I'm particularly interested in repertoire ideas. Uh, we will have a virtual product at the end of this semester. We are doing the Vivaldi Gloria, some of that is going well, some of it is more challenging. And I've learned a lot about what works virtually and what doesn't. I would love your ideas of repertoire that you have done with virtual choir, SATB, this is a community group, uh, um, basically non-auditioned, and uh, things that you, th that you have found that have worked really well with virtual choir. Thank you. <laughs> that got quiet. <laughs> I'm actually doing Troy's in meeting. We're a blast, and that's going great. <laughs> that's going for virtual car. Same, Jenny. I'm doing that with my community course. Oh, really? <laughs> what was it? Troy Robertson's in meeting. We are blessed. Thank you. <laughs> I just got my copy from my sound and my person who's compiling them today. I just got the final version of the same song. <laughs> Well, we're doing um, we're doing Om Shanti Om by Judy Rose, and it's it's very repetitive, so that's why we're it's kind of simple, but it's repetitive, but it's really good. So Om Shanti Om. By whom? Judy Rose. Judy Rose. Yeah, Rose like the flower. R O S E. Maybe put some um, some other great pieces that worked um, in the chat because I think that there's there's certainly some things that that work really well. Um, and then other things that I've tried that haven't. <laughs> um, anybody just got a really hilarious story of something that just was absolute trashy, like it did not work. Like, give me a something juicy that was like an absolutely terrible day um, where you tried something and it was nicht so gut. I, the only thing I can think of right now is that sometimes I just like, you know, it takes a bajillion hours to listen to all these recordings, whether it's sight reading or the kids, right? And like, I have a couple kids, <laughs> like, cannot match anything close <laughs> to what the song is. And I just laugh and laugh and laugh. And I don't love them any less. In fact, I might love them more for it. But I just want to like be real that out of like, if I have a class of 25 kids or something, I probably on, on the first pass, I probably have like five recordings that are like <laughs> close to accurate and like one that's actually right. And then the other ones, like, I don't know what they're listening to. I don't, so yes. uh, I just oh want to be real that like it, yeah. <laughs> and like for both the junior high and the high school kids, like I have, they have had me crying. And so sometimes those kids like just, they, if they're in there, they're tuned down or like, maybe I can like edit it. So like these four notes that they sang are in it, but then everything else is muted. And then I had a total fail with um, Soundtrap trying to like pitch shift a kid because, you know, he sings everything down in an octave. And I was like, oh, maybe I'll just pitch shift him up. 12 you know whatever half steps and then he sounded like a munchkin and i have not laughed that hard it, i can't i don't even remember i was like oh my god i'm like well i can't use that and i can't use this <laughs> so sometimes i also like the kid that i really really like i'm like that's a good voice i just like double <laughs> they go in twice so. <laughs> oh man but yes yeah i agree it's not like a big fail but it is like either i have that same question I'm like what 
what were you guys listening to? Like, did you go back and listen to your recording? Did you think it sounded like the guide track or? Just well, they're actually not listening back because they're like so terrified, which I understand because like when I listen, it's like sometimes actually terrifying. Because <laughs> it's like, and we're not doing virtual choirs at all. We're doing like solo singing, but like on the karaoke assignment, I, I got, I don't even know how to describe like what it is I received, you know, like it, it wasn't even a song. I, it was some solfege and some made up words. And I'm just like crying, like, oh, how did we get here? But also like, thank God for this because at least I'm laughing and semi enjoyable. But some of these things that we're getting is just like not here on this planet. In Soundtrap, we're still getting to know Soundtrap, but I had them record and with peer review, um, I had them do self review and I made them have their track playing of them singing while they talked about it. And the things they would say about the, so it was good because they were reflecting and sometimes you can hear when they're like, that was pretty good or they have nothing to say or some of them are like, oh, that was a hot mess. Oh, oh, just wait, Miss Gleason, it's gonna get good. It's gonna, okay, I thought that was better than it was or what. And they, sometimes they know, but it was also really humorous, but it was then I literally, data, I had a self-reflection right there that they didn't have to type up and write and listen and write about it, but they had to listen to it because they had to record themselves talking while it was going on a second track. So that gave me a good laugh and gave me a lot of information about if they knew how to fix it and just were lazy or if they really didn't hear what I was hearing. I love that. That's such a great idea, Sarah. I, I've been thinking about ways to force my conducting students also to watch their dang videos and like actually give, but maybe if I just have them voice over, that's fantastic. You can do the picture and picture things too. If they, I mean, they're good with, yeah. I mean, on YouTube all over, it's people like listening to music and reacting to it. They're doing that for themselves, wow. not for each other because that would, could get dicey. Just to answer my own question, my my most epic fail this semester was I was like so excited. I figured out finally in Canvas how to have them basically they they had recorded themselves conducting for my beginning conducting class silently. And then they were given a peer review where they had to go in and sing basically picture in picture. And so like if Sarah was the conductor and I'm the singer, I watch Sarah conducting it and I sing, I record a video of my screen capturing Sarah conducting and me singing. And I had written out an 18 step, like it was step by step, like this is baby steps. Here's what you're gonna do in Canvas next. And we, I like was ready to go. I explained it, they had the steps. I sent them into breakout rooms with only themselves. And I said, just ping me if you need me to come in and help. I thought this was gonna take 15 to 20 minutes. It took the entire 75 minutes. And these are college kid, college juniors. And they, they I mean, they were a disaster. I, I was like, well, I guess we're not doing anything else except this. It was, it was very humbling. So I, <laughs> I just laughed and sort of moved on. And I think that's the day I poured myself some wine at about three in the afternoon. So yeah. Um, hi, Tucker Biddlecombe. We are, uh, nice to see you. We are um, currently just talking about the, the, the hilarious moment of any disaster, but um, you were gonna be on this round table. So is there anything you wanna share that's gone like super duper well, or was like a totally hilarious disaster moment this semester for you? Uh, can they be one and the same? Um, <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, hi everybody. Um, I, something that I, I think has worked well has been projects. Uh, something that uh, has multiple pieces that people can work towards. Um, my students have been pretty motivated to complete the two projects that we've been working on. And they've been, they've been a lot of pieces, a lot of, a lot of filming and things like that, that I've had to do. But the children's chorus that my wife directs, on the other hand, has been a lot of small things. And what we've found is that the small things don't necessarily motivate them quite the same way. And this is, of course, talking about my older students and the children's course are younger kids. But uh, working, working in terms of sort of, it's almost like a to-do list, you know, that they have that they're checking boxes. And for my college kids, uh, it's been, we, for example, we've been doing a piece by Giancarlo Minotti, uh, the unicorn, the gorgon, and the manicore. So they're recording each of these movements. They, they send it in. We've done, we've been able to do some things live with masks. And each time we record another piece of it, 
they seem to work a little bit harder, you know, going the next time. You know, like, all right, well, we're gonna we're gonna do this, and we're gonna we're gonna come in right now. I mean, they spent three hours yesterday doing a shot uh, for for one of the madrigals. That's just time on their own. If if I had asked them or demanded that of them, I don't necessarily think it would have gone very well. But they're kind of finding this self motivation because of completing the project. Now, the project doesn't have to be as big as the one that I'm doing, but if it's if if it's more than one piece, you know, if they if you're putting together maybe a small set of pieces or something like that, or or can find some project-based learning organism that they can work with. I think that they have, have shown sort of just more general desire to, to kind of come back, keep working and keep working through it. I've been a little bit down on young people in the past few years. Um, and my, my friends on this panel, you know, we, we talk all the time about trying to motivate kids. And boy, have I been wrong. Like they are just, absolutely that these are the most this is the most resilient group of students i've ever worked with in my entire teaching career um and you know the i i think the the thing is we talk about choosing things you know sometimes uh, we choose problems that we allow to consume ourselves and i think one of the, my problems with with young people has been they choose they tend to choose things that consume them well this thing they didn't choose it it chose them and, you know, I just, I've been so impressed with their resilience and just how, how much desire they have to keep going and find some kind of normalcy. And it certainly gets me up um, every day to, to do what I can to, to make it better. That being said, um, finding the silver lining is really, really difficult. You know, the, I, I, I'm building a, another little talk like this and I, it's three times the planning uh, for twice the exhaustion for the same pay and half the payoff <laughs> and you know the the other you know that's that's something that i've just had to kind of allow myself to think because i i think all of us are just such inherent positive thinkers that we just don't allow ourselves to 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 admit that this is tough for us too uh, and also tell them that it's tough for us too i've been really open with my students and said this is hard for me um, i'm not doing well right now I'm, you're not seeing the best that i have to offer and i think they appreciate that kind of vulnerability and honesty um, which is not necessarily in my nature. The last thing I wanted to say is I've been, the, for the first time in my life, I'm completely okay with B work uh, from them, from myself. Uh, like, oh, I'm putting this together. That sounds like a B and I'm gonna go with the B because a B is just fine. Um, I'm not okay with C work. I'm never okay with C work, but, but I'm okay. I, I've, I've in, in this particular area of compassion, I'm just trying to, trying to be okay with B work and I've never felt better about it. Like compiling a virtual experience that's B work takes an A plus effort. Um, and I think anybody who would sort of, you know, has, has done it has definitely known that. Um, and no, I, ha I haven't like, you know, turned on the Zoom when I've had my pants off or something like that. Like nothing that bad has happened, but you know, I'd like, I still got a week left. So give me a little bit of time. And I think I, I might be able to, I might, I, I might could get there. Please don't. <laughs> um, one, time I got, one time I got kicked out of my own Zoom meeting um, and, <laughs> and then I couldn't, like my Wi-Fi went out and I was at home and uh, I had to join on my phone, but I have bad reception inside my apartment. So I had to go outside. And so I was on my phone outside and like the trash truck is coming. <laughs> And like the next day I was like, you guys, I'm sorry. Like that was, and they were like, actually that was kind of fun. <laughs> I was like, look everybody, here comes the trash truck. I had the same thing, Susie. I, I got kicked out of my own Zoom. It was to the point the kids were texting me like, Miss Linnell, we can get you back on. They, they made me the host. And I'm like, wait, how did you get to be the host? And they're like, we got, we got you, get back on, get back on. Come on, get back on. I'm like, oh, okay. So the kids are hosting me. So yeah, had the same thing, had the same thing, Zoom. <laughs> That's fabulous. Well, my final question, sort of just one of the things that I've learned through this as well is just the, the many, many chefs in the kitchen is actually better. <laughs> and collaboration does, you know, all the work, the amount of work, the A plus effort that Tucker was just talking about, really can that workload can be shared if you're willing and able to do some collaborative projects. And 
I'm just curious what kind of collaborations you've already done or have planned for the spring. I know just Troy and I, um, and I, I think uh, Kendra has done some, some collabor collaboration with Troy and his university. Um, and I know Susie with her other middle schools in her district are collaborating because then you can just divide, she's got three middle schools in her district. You just divide the all three choir directors. Like, okay, you're doing the click tracks for these. You're doing the final audio for these. You're doing the final video for these. And then the kids still get to see these projects at the end, but you haven't done, you've lessened your load by, by a third. So what kinds of collaborations have you done that have been successful and or are you planning for the spring to kind of get people motivated that we're gonna have to be doing this probably at least through you know, May and June. So I see Amy Moyer. So my, um, can you hear me okay with this? My headphones, okay, good. Um, so my, uh, our district, they cut all elementary choir um, for this year. So my colleagues and I have been going, okay, what, you know, we need to recruit still, but how are we gonna do this? So the high school, like, you know, that the high school right next door to mine, essentially, that my kids actually go to, that choir director and I have essentially hooked up to create like promotional videos to send out to the elementary schools for different holidays. So we sent out a rhythm Halloween change pattern thing for In the Hall of the Mountain King and connected um, this, the guy, this guy in Greece, Christos, who created the choreography, let us use his choreography. And we're doing another thing um, with all of our tenors and basses um, for You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch, so that those videos can then go to the elementary schools for their um, for their announcements the weeks right before whatever holidays they might be. So we're trying to connect, create like ones throughout the year just to keep it present. Um, and it's made a huge difference. Um, hopefully, I mean, we won't see it till later. And then the other thing that my colleague, middle school colleague and I did was we hosted our own area chorus, virtual area chorus. We had 96 kids sign up. Um, and so they were, I know. And last year it was in person, it was like 130. We expected maybe to get like 20 this year. And I looked at the list, I was like 96 kids on a Google Meet. This is going to be great. Um, <laughs> but they, they were all so excited to sing. So it was worth it. It's a lot of extra work, but worth it. Um, Cassie, Cassandra had something she wanted to share, I think. Hi, everybody. I um, am teaching both at Cuesta Community College and I have my own community chorus in San Luis Obispo. And um, I wanted to offer something out for the community folk, but I think it would work for everybody, is that um, I'm trying to use um, things that are familiar to them within an unfamiliar environment. So I actually chose one of their favorite songs that they just love to sing. Uh, that's one of our kind of go-to gig songs or when we're on tour, it's really easy to polish it up and sing it so that when they were in the new recording environment, they had something that they loved and something that was familiar. So it was super comforting to them. And I think I'm gonna continue doing that. Um, my oldest choir member is 82 and bless her heart, she's recording herself. Um, and, uh, and of my 45 members, I have 25 who are coming to rehearsal and they're coming every week and helping each other record and learning how to record themselves. And I'm finding for my older folk who are so much more isolated uh, that the weekly just seeing each other is super important. So just like a lot of you, I'm not requiring that they record if they just want to show up and sing, you know, or just see uh, folks that that's good. Um, and one other thing to offer out, uh, this has been mentioned, um, I'm designing the rehearsal shorter, right, of course, but I'm also trying to address the personal needs of the singer. So I'm running it a little bit more like a vocal lesson, having them watch their mouths and their tongues in the Zoom window, which we can't do in choir, but I do, um, a good seven minutes um, on breathing. And uh, Peggy Sears at CSU Bakersfield uh, is a tremendous vocalist and she has sent me um, uh, weekly breathing exercises. And I've been going through the steps and I'm happy to share this with Dr. Benson or with Troy uh, if you wanna, I'll get her permission, of course. Um, and I've gotten a lot of feedback emails saying, thank you for focusing on the breathing because uh, just being in the environment is super stressful for them. 
And so to, to reconnect that they're not just a singing head in a square, that they're a full singing body and moving around has been um, really helpful. And yet less is more with Zoom. So I've done Lift Every Voice and Sing in two parts. So we got some social justice things. I did America the Beautiful out of the Episcopal Hymnal. Um, and I do try to point out to them once we've done a full run through, uh, because I have choir members who, who moved away who are now calling in. So choir members from Washington State, from Arizona, I even have one calling in from Japan to uh, come back to rehearsal. And I remind them that throughout the Central Coast and throughout the Western United States and now across the ocean, we have all sung this song together. And it's, it's really important to remind them of that, that this sound has rung through uh, the ethos as a chorus, um, just a little bit further apart than we're used to. Love that, Cassie. Thank you. And and I think that idea of community. I think Dave, you just wrote that in the chat as well. That just reminding ourselves, you know, as Tucker said, that like be work, and also just we can do less, and we can just use our time to build community and let singers, whether children or adult or anywhere in between, come together and and help support each other. Troy, speaking of supporting each other, Troy and Cora Moore have, as Jenny said earlier, have just been a tremendous, tremendous, um, not just sort of <laughs> asset, but like, I mean, we've needed this more than, than I think Troy sometimes remembers. Um, as we talked about yesterday, Troy uh, is always on to the next thing and, and um, is such a giving person and the fact that not only did he come up with this amazing idea to to create Cora Moore and to or to shift Cora Moore's focus really um, during the pandemic, but also to offer it all for free and to really have it be teachers and conductors and musicians just supporting one another. I'm so grateful. I know personally for that and uh, and for this platform to, to still engage with all of you. So thanks for being here, Troy and Cora Moore. Thank you for hosting this event and, and everybody who contributed and everybody for just coming in and listening. It's always nice. Oh, and doggies. Hi, Arlie. Oh my God. Um, thanks for making us laugh and uh, inspiring us with some great ideas tonight. 